So my name is Mukami Njeru. I currently serve as the secretary of the Actuarial Society of Kenya and I've been doing this for the last four years. Uh, we've had a term of two years that has been renewed and yeah, I am a qualified actuary. I qualified in 2012 and I came back home in 2013 at which point in time I joined the Actuarial Society. Uh, my journey has been good. I think my experience in the actual field has taught me that it's important to, to have a strong uh, professional community that supports each other and I think that's really what TASC wants to do for our region. So I've really enjoyed being part of this journey, we've done so many things. I think now we have an active actual fraternity, we have a, an actual convention that is recognized world over and we have really good speakers and experiences there. Uh, we are now working on an Actuaries Act as the council just to be able to embed our profession in legislation and yeah we've able, been able to influence the industry in terms of what they think about what actuaries do you know and more than that we've been able to support each other through the working parties and what we do with the younger actuaries or in areas where one is not as experienced as, as they can be. So we've really been able to create forums where people can get the, the actual support and community that they want. So yeah, so I'm really proud of the work that TASC has done. Of course there's still quite a way to go. I think with only under 50 qualified members who are based in the region, there is so much we want to do. I think if we look to the future, we want uh, actuaries to be able to give opinion pieces about you know, pertinent issues in our economy and also to be present in different sectors of the economy like banking, you know, telecoms, areas where we haven't ventured into. So I think the future is bright even for the, for the younger actuaries. So I think that's been my journey uh, in task and also as an actuary. And I think it's an exciting profession and career and yeah, we look forward to, to, to the future. And we, we are also looking forward to celebrating 25 years, obviously. But uh, yeah, we're really proud of the journey that has been for TASC and we really celebrate it. Uh, we applaud our founding members who are the foresight to, to start this. And yeah, we, we, we applaud the efforts and the work they've put together and we also you know, thank the supporting bigger brother bodies, you know, the IFOA and the IAA for yeah, the input they've given to us over the, the years, even when we didn't have the local capacity to do a lot of what we are doing. And we also thank the, the local actuaries who have really stepped up to the plate. You know, everybody has a full-time job and, you know, they're carrying additional responsibilities in working parties, in planning conventions, and in other areas, so we really applaud, applaud them. And I think I just want to encourage everyone as we look to the future uh, to think about what we want the actual profession to be. We're really being asked to, to stretch and evolve and not just be technical people. And uh, yeah, I look forward to the actuary of the future. I think it's been a, 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 a thought piece that the global profession has been looking to. Uh, about how we can evolve and continue to serve uh, our markets as, as, as a profession that can be counted on, you know, to, to, to ensure stability and to give correct advice. So the role of the secretary to the Council of the Actual Society is one that involves planning and coordination and a bit of administration. So it's really to ensure that the operations of the society are running efficiently and uh, you know things are just in place. So the, the role is quite exciting for anyone who's thinking of taking it up. You will have seen that uh, there are council positions available. So I think the role for me has been good. I, I think I am a structured, organized person, so I've been able to apply my strengths to do that. I think we've been able to have a couple of events each year, you know, have a calendar that we try to keep to and sort of have, you know, industry talks and other uh, specific events that are important for the, for, the, for the industry and for the actual profession. As I said, we've also been able to plan successfully conventions for the last four years plus 
and that's been quite uh, well received and we received very good feedback about the, the, the quality of the convention so that's also been an achievement. I think also just now having a register of members or knowing who our members are, being able to communicate with them, that was a big part of the admin because I think previously the records had not been kept so well uh, and now we are able to, to do that. And now to the future we are hoping to have a website uh, that is interactive that members can sort of uh, use as well. So that's also been uh, an achievement, although it's still work in progress. I hope by the release of this uh, clip, it's something that will have gone live. We we'll hope for it to go live uh, by the time of the convention. So, I, and I think just also having a vibrant council has been an achievement. Of course, I like my council members, but getting them all active at the same time is not necessarily the easiest, but I think it's been a good achievement in terms of being able to get the right people, leading their working parties and being vibrant in giving their, their ideas and thoughts about the direction of the society. So I think, yeah, those are what I would call highlights. And of course, I would not say it's all me. Of course, we have a secretariat uh, who has been very helpful with the admin, Mr. Cyril Nabutola. So I think a lot of the achievements of the secretary role have been, you know, enabled by, by the hard work that he's put in. So I really want to applaud him as well. So towards the beginning of 2016, uh, an idea was birthed uh, at, the, at the Council of the Actual Society to offshoot the education arm of the society into the actual Academy of East Africa. This was really brought about the, by the fact that uh, our East African market um, is not well serviced in terms of actual skills and there was a lot of uh, gearing towards using external professionals, you know, people from other jurisdictions, and also geared uh, by the fact that Kenya has really developed in this space and our counterparts have not. So really we were thinking about how we can be able to assist or use the expertise that is now currently in Kenya to be able to uplift the rest of the East African community and to move forward together as a stronger force. So the Academy was born to uh, make sure we can um, expedite the qualification of actuaries in the whole region and really it's to be able to provide mentorship as well as training because I can say from my experience that uh, qualifying is not an easy route and it's something that you do need support from somebody who's gone on that journey before. So that's really the, the vision that we wanted the academy to be able to take the skills that have currently been domiciled in Kenya and that have grown exponentially over the last five years, you know, moving to over 40 qualified actuaries from, you know, less than 10 is no small feat. But you see, we did want to be able to use that new expertise and be able to ensure that the other countries in the region and even in Kenya, the people who are struggling to qualify, who haven't uh, been able to benefit from the CAS Business School Scholarship can also have access to the same type of input from a qualified actuary in their journey towards qualification. So really that's the vision of the academy um, uh, for, for the region and it's been good so far. Um, so, so far we've been able to like, establish it and register it and also we've been able to get key stakeholders on board. Our key stakeholders are mainly the regulators for now because we saw that model in Kenya that when the regulator buys into the training of actuaries, of future actuaries, then they support it and the market supports it as well. So we, we needed to get their buy-in and then we also needed to give them a cost-effective uh, model that can train as many people as possible in the same time period. So just to be uh, specific about that, like for the actual pro training program that IRA has, it can only train five people per year. But with the same resource, with a local option, you can be able to train, you know, maybe 40 people per year, you know, if they're going to benefit from the program. And also potentially also give more people than 40 the opportunity to pay for the content and the opportunity themselves. So really it's to be able to provide a cost-effective way of building up the industry and also to take this to the region, as I mentioned. So really trying to set up the structures for Uganda, Tanzania and Rwanda so far. So it's been, as I said, it's been good progress. Uh, 
the, the things we've done apart from setting up and establishing, we've been able to run a pilot in Seychelles. We did that last year. So we were able to go to the regulator and the industry and start upskilling the actuaries or the people who've been identified as people who can go on the actual path. We've also been able to um, earmark a university. So for each country, the plan is to have an institution where the courses can be run. So the academy will be housed in academic institutions rather than the academy having a specific home that is independent of, of all academic institutions. And it's because really we see the need to synergize the efforts in different countries. So of course all uh, universities offering actual studies want eventually their students to get exemptions to exams and that can be achieved by having fellows as part of their faculty. So that's one of the things we've been trying to work on to have the academy domiciled in universities. So the academy benefits from having already set up facilities that it can use to teach, but the university also benefits by having expertise that can improve the quality of their courses. So that's part of the thing we've been doing. So as I said, we did the pilot in Seychelles was very successful. Now we've spoken to Uganda and Tanzania and Rwanda on the same. So where we are at as well is on the financial part, but we do need to raise funds to support the academy set up, especially you know, for trainers, um, travel course and things like those, and things as such as setting up the website, because that's also something else that we're doing. So we're at a stage where it's sort of at a sort of initial growth stage, where it's a bit aggressive in terms of the things we need to do on the ground, talking to different stakeholders who can support it. And we are happy that even the Institute and Faculty of Actuaries wants to support this idea. So I think the idea has come to, to, to its time and I, I, we expect that during the course of next year we will start to run the courses. The other hurdle, or rather the other item that the Academy also needs to work on is the issue of content creation. Of course for each exam there is tutorial material and study material and because the Academy doesn't own any of that material, coming up with the resource for teaching is what has probably caused the delay in, in terms of inception. So we, are, we, we, we tried to speak to ACTED and BPP, but it was agreed that it was best for the academy to create its own content. And I think that's what we decided to get some of the university teaching staff to assist the trainers of the academy to develop content. Just because the trainers are fellows, so they have work experience in terms of professional experience in the workplace, but they may not have training, development, um, sort of expertise and that's where the gap is. So the other thing obviously that we've done as the academy is training trainers because it's just it's not assumed that it's because you've done an actual exam you know how to train. So a lot of also what we did this year involves uh, training trainers who are marked for different subjects. So the academy is doing well so far of course as I said it's not an it's not uh, a walk in the park, but it's definitely something worthwhile that uh, the council has really been able to support. And we are looking forward to also having other partners on board on the journey.